Hello and welcome back to Banner Page and our Iron Man challenge. Now, when we left off, I uh, <laughs> made a bit of an error in the beginning, which I gotta say was amusing, and I decided, hey, why not? <laughs> why not show that? Because, come on, you know, it's hilarious when uh, people misspeak and, you know, I thought I'd leave that in there for a bit of fun. But anyway, we're going to be attacking some bandits today, and uh, hopefully we will do a reasonable job against them. Now, I have updated, by the way. I have updated the mod, and uh, according to the mod creator, who literally did huge amounts of work on this, apparently, to be able to make this save game compatible, uh, well, it is save game compatible. Apparently it is. So I'm very much looking forward to uh, seeing what is happening with the uh, with the battle size because uh, as far as I'm aware the battle size was a bit of an issue with my setting and I have fixed that now so hopefully we will see larger scale battles it had nothing to do with the mod itself it was literally just my own uh, well I, I, I wouldn't call it idiocy but you know my own uh, my own setting I guess you could say but anyway the point is is that that should be fixed now so we shouldn't have to worry about anything too much. Now, you can see here that I'm actually using grenades in this because uh, we're in a bit of a bit of a difficult situation right now. And the situation that we're in right now is the fact that the Swadians have now declared war against us. And I'm not entirely sure who isn't at war against us right now. So we're going to have a bit of a, a bit of spot of bother because I'm actually in a Swadian village right now, and I'm actually helping them. Because the uh, the farmer nearby in the town of Dirim gave me a quest to come here and rid the village of the bandits, and as you can see, we're gaining 15 renown? 15 renown for that? That's crazy good. Yeah, I'm gonna take that, thanks very much. I won't, I, I won't take any of their stuff because I don't really want to, but, uh, you know, gaining some honor and all that is always great. Now, basically what I've been doing is I have been running back and forth in between Kelradan Castle and the Salt Mine because it's actually relatively close by. And uh, Kelradan Castle actually had quite a few prisoners in there. And I thought to myself, okay, well, let's try and make uh, make the most of that, shall we? Anyway, so, so Swadia is now at war against us once again. And uh, let's actually just take a quick look at the, uh, at the, at the reports. Uh, let's have a look at the faction relations. There we go. Now, I, that's the thing about Banner Page. It has so many amazing and really, really good informational menus that sometimes I just get lost in them because there are just so many good ones. But anyway, as you can see right here, we are currently at war against the Nords, against the Saranids, and against the Swadians. So we're not at war against the Kurgits anymore. And we have a truce with the Rodox. So I suppose that's okay. So I guess the best thing that we can do is, uh, well, uh, yeah, apparently they took Nadar Castle? Wait a minute, no, no, we took Nadar Castle from them. Okay, so that's actually fine. So, should I try and take Uxkal, for example? Or should I try and take Durchil's Castle or something along those lines? That might actually be kind of good. This is my army at the moment. I just have, literally, Varangian guards for the most part. And I do have below average morale, which is... bad. It is. It's really, really bad to have low average, you know, below average morale right now. So, ah, hello. Hello, friend. Ah, I really wish I had more, uh, more pathfinding skills. Oh, look at that. A, a, over 8,000. That's insanity right there. Very nice indeed. Okay, 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 okay. Come on, get him. Ah, I couldn't get him. Ah, that was so unfortunate. Really, really close. If I could get him in a battle, that would have been fantastic. Oh well, never mind. Okay, I guess we'll just try and take Dochios Castle then. And it's going to be pretty easy because it will be done in about nine hours, which is pretty good. Oh, the Saranids and the Kingdom of Swadia entering into an alliance with each other. I'm actually wondering if anyone is going to appear here relatively soon. Nope, seems not. The vassals do not seem to want to stop us, which is absolutely fine with me. And let's lead our soldiers in an assault here. All right, ah yeah, pretty nice standard layout of castle, but two ladders... Oh, yes. I love the ones that actually do have the two ladders, especially in different locations as well. I like this a lot. That's going to make things so much easier for us as well, because we're going to be able to get these guys 
in a situation where they just basically can't do anything, you know? They're not going to be able to do anything from this point. So let's hope that I can maybe... I'm going to throw a grenade. I don't know whether to go up this one or to go up the other one. I think I should probably go up the other one. This one is uh, quite a bit uh, busy. Boom. Let's just do a little bit of damage to them. And then what we'll do is we'll go over here. And I'm going to save my last grenade because we're going to need it, I'm pretty sure. And uh, bear in mind, we're up against Swadians, so they do have pretty decent crossbowmen, you know? They have pretty decent crossbowmen, so got to be a bit careful of those guys. Going to use... Yeah, yep, there we go. Going to use that right there just to get these guys out the way. And then what we're, what we're going to do is hopefully not take too much damage getting up here. Okay, come on now. Don't shoot me in the face, please. I would appreciate. No damage. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad. There we go. Nice. Oh, yes. The Wilhelm Scream. Very good. Oh, I love blunt weapons. Blunt weapons are so fantastic because they do allow you to knock down your opponent every so often. And even without a shield bash, they're going to do that. So that's really nice. Oh, 45 damage. Ouch. All right. Yeah. I guess I'm going to tell everyone to charge in. That seems to be the only thing I can do. Oh, wow. I don't really want to go up there, to be honest. I feel like I'm probably going to die if I go up there right now. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stand around here, wait for some reinforcements to arrive, because I'm pretty sure we're going to get some reinforcements relatively soon. Oh, nice hit, Nafatun Rider. Very good. That is very nice. Okay, come on, fellow. Hello. I don't have any throwing weapons, so I can't actually do damage to you right now, which is actually a crying shame. Hmm, maybe I can just go up here and see if I can take him down. Oh, you're reloading? Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> uh, there we go, take him out. Now, bear in mind that my shield is still at 100%, because its resistance factor is so incredible. Okay, so I'm actually trying to kind of interrupt these guys a little bit, so that they may want to go into melee with me. But as you can see, I have to block from a variety of different angles. Ah, they, they're all in melee now. I wonder who's going to make the first move. <laughs> this is hilarious. These guys are literally like, uh, yeah, I think I'm not going to go forward. I'm not going to attack. I'm not going to bring out my ranged crossbow or anything like that. I'm just going to literally just wait. That's it. Is this like a... This is like a status quo standoff kind of thing going on. Whoa, a lot of people leveling up. Look at that. We had a bunch of companions level up in uh, quick succession right there. Uh, if I attack, do, do they do anything? Yeah, they, they do actually want to attack me as a result of that. Oh, now they're bringing out their crossbows again. So if I... Oh, yeah, yeah. So look, that was hilarious. Wow. That is actually the first time I've ever seen anything like that happen. I guess it is literally just because we were in such a weird positioning... And uh, I've never really been in that kind of situation before. So that's really cool. Oh, yes, you got murdered, Tin. Oh, I'm so sorry. That is not very good, is it? Okay, so let's see what I can do here. Yes, shield bash. There we go. Take him out. Yeah, there we go. Because Did you see that? Did you see that? My blunt weapon managed to stun the one guy and then I used my shield bash to stun the other one and that basically allowed me to get a bit of a better opening on things now obviously bear in mind that uh, this is just a castle and yeah look at that we're actually eliminating the entire garrison as well which is very very well done oh hello who's this oh Varangian guard let's watch the Varangian guard murder all of these people or or not as the case may be they apparently do not want to murder anyone. They apparently just want to go in here and... Oh, there we go. This guy has a bit of, a bit better of an idea of what to do. Very nice. Good work. Good work for Engine Guard. Very nice indeed. And I believe that is indeed a victory for us. We lost six units in total, which is the power of the Rangian Guards. Can you imagine if I was a Nord vassal right now and I was using the elite units from there? <laughs> oh, that would be insanity wow that would be really really fun yeah so i might have to think about uh maybe uh doing a little bit of defecting or something along those lines that might be quite fun as well but anyway i'm not going to do the automatic uh automatic upgrading anymore 
until I can kind of figure things out. I actually went on a bit of a shopping spree, as you can see right here. So I now have uh, an overabundance of food. So I won't be able to take anything from, you know, from the uh, from the loot right here. And uh, here's the thing. I'm actually not going to be requesting Dirtios. Should I re request Dirtios Castle? I'm going to request it, actually. I'm going to request it. Uh, because I think that it would be quite a good castle to have, because as you can see, it's pretty close to Kaladan, and uh, we might be able to launch an assault on Dirim as a result of being so close. But I am a bit worried about potentially now this, this happening, and uh, that means there's going to be a lot of people coming in here. Uh, if if another vassal joins with a significant army, I'm probably going to end up leaving, because I don't really want to fight against. 500 units or something. I think that could be quite dangerous for us. Uh, let's see what I can do here. Let's level up a couple of these archers. Yes, there we go. Another marksman has joined the ranks. Very nice indeed. Let's level up Jeremus again in power strike and strength. I know, I know. It's turning into a bit of a meme now, isn't it? Where I literally just level up my strength and power strike with my companions every single time you see me leveling them up. But as I've already said, it's generally a in my opinion, a pretty decent idea to get your companions into a situation where they can actually deal decent damage. And then from there, you can start to branch off and do different things with them. And even in the case of Jeremus here, who is all, you know, all things considered, completely our medic. Uh, obviously, Yamira has more first aid, but Jeremus is going to be our medic for the most part. And him having a decent med medicinal skill, that's absolutely fine, of course. But I kind of want him to be able to get his own kills and stuff like that if he needs to. But the next time that he levels up, um, now that I've gotten him to, a, I think he's at, is he at 12 strength? I think he's at 12 strength or 11. Not entirely sure. But if he's at 12, then I'll start leveling up his intelligence from now and start getting him some more um, medic-based support skills. And that's going to be very important for us. Okay, so now we have to be very careful because, of course, we do have two ladders. We have two ladders, and it's nighttime, which is actually good for us. I think that might, be, might, that might be pretty good for us, because the enemy does have quite a few skirmishes, and whoa. That was a lot of enemies. That was 45 enemies? <laughs> what? Okay, that's pretty crazy. Bear in mind, however, that the uh, amount of grenades that we have is limited. And uh, as you can see, if I go into my baggage here, I do not have any more in my inventory. You could do that if you wanted to, but of course that, that, is, that is your choice, you know, you can do it if you want. But otherwise, uh, yeah, I think I'm, not, I'm not, probably not going to do that at any point unless, and this is a big unless, unless there is just an insane amount of units coming at us and we, we need the help, you know. That's the kind of thing that I'm going to be doing. But as it stands right now, we've eliminated 94 units out of the 260, I think, that are actually against us right now. So I don't think we're going to be having too many difficulties, but you never know. So oh, it seems like these guys are not actually wanting to come over here, which is actually great, because if they came over here... Oh, no, never mind. They're actually starting to come over here now. So I think I might use my grenade. Boom. Okay. Not too bad. My Varangian guards are actually down there, and they seem to be doing quite a bit of damage, amazingly enough. They're actually two versus many, and uh, they have literally killed everyone down there. What? I'm very surprised. Very good. Very nice work, friends. Oh, yes. They, they did a great job right there. All right, so also what we want to do is we want to try and level ourselves up a little bit as well. So let's see if I can maybe utilize my grenade here a little bit. Boom, there we go. Nice little bit of a kill there. And see, look at that. I actually didn't even kill that many. I killed like, what, seven or something like that? Seven in one explosion? I guess that's all right, but obviously now I'm out of them. Now I don't have them anymore. So what I'm going to do is going to put on some of my throne weapons and uh, see if I can use those against the opponent on the ladder here. I really love throwing weapons. When I have a decent amount of throwing skill, they're super fun to use. And... Uh, I can't believe that I uh, have been so bad with them in the in the past. I mean, I'm still pretty awful, but, you know, I'm much better than I used to be. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. Let's just look at that. It was just so much fun just to throw these weapons at these guys. Yeah, I think that uh, that kind of sways my uh, 
sways my decision making a little bit in regards to which faction I might play in Banner Lords. Yes. Did you hear about that, by the way? Banner oh, yeah, I'm sure you did. Yes. I'm sure you heard about the fact that uh, Banner Lord is coming out one day ahead of schedule. So that means it's coming out on the 30th instead of the 31st. So there's that. Oh, these axes are fantastic. Yes, give me more axes. There we go. This is what I like to see. Oh, yes. Look at that. We're killing so many. It's amazing. Okay, throwing axes. Give me more of these. Thank you. Okay, I've got uh, three more. So let's get to, get to use them the best that I can. Oh, uh, nice miss. Okay, great. There's, there's a headshot. That's, oh, and then a miss. Great. One out of three. <laughs> uh, not, not particularly good. Ah, oh, hello. Yeah, this is also a reason why... I absolutely love having Varangian Guards or some unit that can use thrown weapons because they basically will allow you to uh, restore your supplies of thrown weapons because you can just pick up their stuff, which is actually really cool. Okay, so now I'm going to have to start getting some, you know, some serious work in here because these guys are going to do a lot of damage coming in and they are starting to wear us down quite obviously, so... Let's see if I can do this here. I, I can't take too much damage. I can't take this 7 and 8 and all this random glancing blow damage. That's just not good. So I'm going to need to be a bit careful here. I also do not want to fall off the ledge. I think you can fall off here. So it would be very, very bad if I were to do that. There we go. There we are. Yes. Goodbye. Very good. Okay. Yeah, it's very nice indeed. Okay. So I think, I think that's it. There we go. Actual massive siege defense right there. And we ended up losing six. I personally feel like we probably would have been able to do that even without the grenades. Mm, we would have taken more casualties, of course. But, uh, you know, that's, that's just dependent on what we want to do with it. Okay, so what's actually happening here? Ah, there is a friend of ours down there. And uh, I will attempt... Ah... <laughs> oh. Is he dead? Oh, no, he's not dead. Yes. Okay, hello. I have a throne. Okay, I'm just going to throw it anyway. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up a throne weapon and finish off the guy in the final final second with a throne weapon. That would have been fun. Anyway, there you go. 50 enemies. Matelt killed 13 with her grenades, I can assume. Clethy killed uh, 5 and wounded 1. And uh, that is it. There we go. Okay, so now we can take these guys prisoner. I think I'm going to do that for the most part. I think most people I will take prisoner as much as I can and uh, just try and make as much money as possible. That's basically what I'm going to attempt to do here because being able to take those guys prisoner and then, uh, you know, having their ransoms be paid and so on and so forth, that seems like a pretty good idea to me. So I am going to take some of these pieces of armor, at least the, the first two, because... This armor right here is 42 body armor, which is actually really, really good. I don't think don't think many of our forces actually have anything that good. <laughs> they might. They might. Let's actually just take a quick look here. So, 36. Uh, 46, that's actually not bad. Clethy, I think, might... No, no, she's using something really good, too. It seems like... Most of them actually have decent stuff on already. So it's probably not even necessary. Look at that, 37. They're all wearing some pretty good stuff. Did I look at Butcher already? Yeah, yep, 36. Look at that. Seems like they all have pretty decent stuff on. 35. Okay, I'm going to give Tin a bit of an upgrade right there. And Yamira. Well, how's Yamira doing? 35. Okay, she could probably use a bit of an upgrade there as well. And how is, how is our man Jeremus doing? He's doing fine. Absolutely fine. He has no bolts. So they all have crossbows, but they don't have bolts. So I'm probably going to have to go to a nearby town and actually buy some, because it seems like bolts don't really get dropped that often, which is kind of amusing. Anyway, let's just get another point in power strike and strength. Yes, it's a meme. And uh, we do have a couple of other friends here to level up as well. Oh, it, it's, you know, it's, it is it is a meme, isn't it? It is, absolutely. Okay, so let's just continue to level up Strength and Iron Flesh. Every single time I do that now, I'm just going to be thinking, oh, yeah, okay, great. You know, let me just continue doing that. Okay, there we go. 
Nice. All right, so that's pretty good. And I'm actually wondering, can I speak to these guys and actually ransom them straight away? No, I can't do that. I have to wait for the ransom. That's absolutely fine. All right, so what I would like to do is go to the salt mine extremely fast. And hopefully I can make it there in time. Uh... Ah, welcome back. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I, I personally don't really mind if he comes back or not, because I think a lot of my people do not particularly like Beheshtar, so uh, it's going to cause some difficulties, potentially. All right, so maybe I can head back there now. No one? No one decided to take advantage of me not being there. All right. Oh, uh, yeah, so by the way, obviously because I couldn't take all of the prisoners, the other prisoners have now been placed into the garrison, and I don't think I can actually... Can I take these? Oh, I can actually take these. Oh, fantastic. That's really, really good. All right. Well, technically, it can be mine. Oh, yes. Also, Nadar Castle has been taken by the Nords, which is intriguing. I would have uh, gone over there to defend if I knew about that. But, uh, oh, well, never mind. I must have missed the, uh, the notification, I guess. But that's actually not even a big deal, really. Because we can take that back very, very quickly indeed. Because obviously, because this is based on native, it does keep many of the fundamentals of base game very much intact. And that means that usually, uh, you know, garrisons that have just been taken, or should we say castles and towns that have just been taken, the garrisons are usually going to be quite bare bones. So you shouldn't have to worry about that too much. Okay, so hello. You, do you want to uh, come over here and say hi? No, no, they don't want to come over here. I'm, I'm, I'm sad now. They apparently did not want to come over. Ooh, hello. There is a serenit. Ooh, I'm gonna wait until, uh, I'm gonna wait until daytime. Then I think I'm gonna attack this guy. I think that might be quite fun. I'm gonna use some throwing axes. I think that will be quite interesting. And uh, Beheshta. Well, as I've said, he's probably not going to stick around for that long because I think a lot of people do not particularly appreciate his presence. So he might just be like, okay, goodbye. But uh, let's actually have a look. Can I reach them? Oh, come on. Oh, oh there we go. We got him. We got him. And we actually got him in a, uh, in a battle with one of these guys, one of our vassal friends. So it's 170 versus 73. I actually did not want this. I was actually hoping for something a little bit, uh, shall we say, just a little bit less, a little bit less problematic, because obviously I wanted more renown, I wanted more morale, and uh, you can only get that by doing even battles or battles that you are outnumbered in. So it would have been quite nice to uh, have that be a thing, but oh well, never mind. I guess this does give me a little bit of a buffer so that I don't lose as many units as I might otherwise lose. As you can see, though, <laughs> uh, our friend, uh, who is it? Be Belgaru? Belgaru, I believe, is our, uh, our ally here. He's not exactly the smartest, uh, smartest, uh, well, sh shall we say, sharpest knife in the, in the drawer or in, in wh wherever, you know, wherever you keep your knives. Anyway, the point is, let's try and help him, shall we? <laughs> let's try and help him. Hello. Is that you? Is that the enemy? Oh, oh, so sorry, horse. Oh, no. Uh, was that was that him? No, that wasn't him. Yeah, the axes. Okay, so here's the thing with axes. Axes are not very good against heavily armored units because they are cutting damage, you know? And if you know anything about the, uh, the way that the uh, weapon system works in Warband, it's all about getting as much piercing damage as possible. If you get piercing damage or even blunt damage to a lesser degree, then you're going to be able to penetrate most of the heavy armor that you're going to be seeing. And that's a really, really effective way of defeating heavily armored targets. That's exactly the reason why I love blunt weapons, because on the one hand, they allow you to take prisoners. And on the other hand, they allow you to defeat very high tier units without too much trouble. And then, of course, you have the piercing weapons. And piercing weapons, in general, are going to be quite hard to come by. You know, and I'm talking about not, not the Morning Star. You know, I'm talking about things like, uh, in this mod specifically, there are some swords that are primarily geared towards using piercing damage and thrusting attacks, and so on and so forth. And that's the kind of thing that 
will be very effective, but only if you can use it in a really kind of, um, it's, it's more situational how you can use those things because on the one hand, if someone gets really close, it, close into you like this, then you're not really going to use a thrusting ability that easily. Like you might be able to if you use, your, you know, you, you utilize your shield bash or your kick or something, then that might actually make a bit of sense. But uh, for the most part, I would I would recommend blunt weapons just just for the uh, the early game and everything. But obviously, that's the reason why throwing axes are kind of difficult to use because you saw there I threw a throwing axe at this guy and he only took 41 damage and you, you, you may be thinking oh well 41 is actually a pretty decent amount of damage but that's the thing you've got to consider that I have nine in power throw you know I've got nine in power throw and these axes are not the worst thing in the world and it's actually you know they, they've actually got a pretty high base damage but it's all to do with the cutting you know the cutting damage is just not very good against heavily armored targets so I might want to consider using javelins instead or something like that. Oh, hello. You're, you're definitely going to get taken prisoner, sir. And uh, come and join me. Come and join my uh, my wonderful, wonderful land of going in the salt mine. <laughs> yeah, now that's the thing. On the other hand, the throwing axes do have a bonus against shields and they can be used in a pinch as a melee weapon. So if you wanted to, what you could do is you could literally just have one shield and then three sets of throwing axes. And then that would mean that you'd have 27 throwing axes for your use, which is actually kind of amazing. And then, you know, when you're starting to get low, you, 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 know, you change to your melee and then you can start using it as a, as a melee weapon. But of course, you've got to bear in mind that the melee functionality is probably going to be a little bit less shall we say, a little bit less damaging than the uh, the usual usual weapons that you're going to be getting. Like Military Cleaver has 35 cutting damage, for example. Military Cleaver is one of my favorite weapons uh, that you can use with a shield. And that usually has 35, or dependent on the, uh, the prefix or the modifier that you have on it, then it will obviously go up and down. You know, heavy Military Cleaver is usually something really, really fun to use anyway this is these are my uh, my current assets balances and so on and so forth in the various towns as you can see i have been investing heavily into suno and i have 24 out of the 68 acres available there i'm going to be returning there relatively soon and seeing what i can do about investing even more money into it and i'm actually hoping that this guy oh no never mind I was actually hoping that this guy actually did come over and go into the siege, but our Vagia, uh, Vagia allies have put paid to that. Oh, look, look at that. Baron Devlian. Uh, you're a devil, aren't you? Ah, uh, okay, yes. As I, as I anticipated, uh, we, are not, we are not getting this, and uh, we have 900 dinars. Okay, so here's the thing. I know some of you want me to create my own faction, and who am I kidding? I would love to create my own faction as well. Because then that will, with the banner page mod, unlock the new custom unit functionality, which I think is going to be really fun to toy around with and, and mess about with and, and try and make the best, you know, best units possible. But uh, unfortunately, I don't think I am quite ready to do that yet. And I'm not talking about me personally. I'm talking about my character and my situation in the game right now. So, because I'm more than ready to go for it. But I'm going to accept the decision for the moment. Because Dirtios Castle, I personally, I don't really care about Dirtios Castle that much. If this was a town or something, like for example, if I had taken Praven, then tried to uh, try to get ownership of it I'd be like oh okay I'm gonna you know I'm gonna renounce my allegiance and so on and so forth and that's exactly what's going to happen I think that would be worth it in that case because Praven having another town is just going to be insane in the amount of money that you're going to be gaining so being able to uh, you know sacrifice your membership in a uh, in a faction for that that's worth it but doing it for a castle yeah maybe not so much you know not so much i was basically just wanting to take dirtios castle because it is a uh, 
it is a nice connector. Do you know what I mean? It's a nice connector. It surrounds the opponent quite nicely at Tilbo Castle, and it basically connects our supply line from here. So, for example, the thing is, is that when you are a little bit more familiar with how you know thieves and so on make money in Warband, then you're going to realize that villagers and caravans have a big impact on the economies of towns. And generally, it is a very good idea to try... Oh, he's, he's actually in there. Never mind. Okay. But yeah, anyway, it's a very good idea to try and increase the security of those supply lines. Because if you do that, it's just going to make everything so much better for you. You know, your prosperity is going to go through the roof. I'm actually kind of surprised that... Uh, whoa, these guys are running around with huge armies. What? What? What, what, is, what is actually going on here? Look at that. King Ragnar and uh, Thane Haida and uh, Jarl Turagor. They're running around with plus 120 units each. What? Okay. That is a bit uh, That is a bit problematic. Just like my morale situation is a bit problematic. Yeah, bear in mind that morale uh, does tend to go down quite fast if you are uh, in a situation where you have a very large army. And I do have quite a large army in comparison to my maximum company size so that is making things a little bit uncomfortable for us right there so what i'm going to do i've got 30 13 000. i'm going to just uh oh okay apparently no one wants to join me that's a bit insulting but all right that's fine oh there's also a farmer there and Frangian guard oh Frangian guard join me yes thank you <laughs> okay that's that's amusing okay so i'm going to just buy uh, a little bit of morale. I could have put all my people in the garrison before doing that if you wanted to save some money, but I'm kind of in a bit of a hurry right now because what I'd like to do is buy some additional acres here, and then I'm going to go back to Keldredan Castle and see what I can do about stopping the siege there. But I might have to let it go. That's the thing. I might just have to sacrifice Keldredan Castle if there are so many units there that I can't possibly do anything to prevent it. So let's have a look. E uh, wow, yeah, that's actually quite a lot. Okay, so we've got, what, 284, uh, the 3, uh, okay, 4, yeah, okay, 6, yeah, okay, no. I'm not going to be doing that. That is way, way, way too much. Uh, do, do, is there anyone here that I actually want to take? Swadian Knight, Shield Maiden? What's the Shield Maiden unit? I haven't seen those before. Oh, okay. Well, I will take one of those just because I'm not entirely sure what they are. I haven't seen that before. Swadian Knight? Do I want to take a Swadian Knight? I don't really care about the Swadian Knights, to be honest. I don't really want to use them in my army anyway. So I suppose what I will do is I'll just take the Vagia units and that's it. And they, they, can, uh, they can just take that if they want to. But uh, what I will do is off screen, I will place some units, my, all, all of my units, shall we say, in the garrison, and then I'll just run back and forth between Karadan Castle and Suno and just try and uh, transfer most of my units back and forth. But anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.